দাঁড়িয়ে আছে না ওখানে Uh, I think the last tour is just starting to make their way out. So if we can move up along this far wall, just to allow them a pathway through, uh, just along this back wall here. And I'll tell you about our dome while we wait for them to head through. Now, above our heads here is the magnificent dome formation. This was formed over 10,000 years of melting glacial waters flooding through our caves and coming upon a wall of sediment and rock which would have sat just around this archway blocking off this area of the caverns up until the 1600s. When these waters came upon this wall, they were of course trapped, and the pressure started to rise. The waters started to whirlpool around, crashing against this limestone rock, slowly eroding it, and carving out this dome formation over thousands of years. Now, had this wall not been excavated in the 1600s, and these waters allowed to flow for just a few hundred more years, they likely would have broken out the surface of the Grimlow Woods above us. From this very top crevice of the dome, there is only about six foot of rock, rock separating it from the Grimlow Woods. This is just a little bit taller than me. Theoretically, if somebody were to climb up into this top crevice, and perhaps pull out the ladder, they probably really freak out when they don't walk us on the woods above us. Now just below the dome, we've got a piece of flowstone. This is one of the first formations you'll see throughout the caves. And this is formed as slightly acidic waters trip through all the cracks in the limestone rock and dissolve all the calcite within. The waters then flow, uh, the, the waters then deposit calcite wherever the waters are flowing. So we can see they fell down over the edge here in this sort of waterfall, tossing all of this calcite, creating a nice piece of flowstone. Oh, 
down so you can see. Now, this river is incredibly shallow today. We don't really have much of a river actually flowing through. They are very shallow and sort of trickling through the rocks. But when we have a full river flowing through, they can actually reach as high as this black dot against this rock right here, and they would be incredibly loud. The reason we don't have much of a river is just because we haven't had a whole lot of rainfall in the previous weeks, so we've not really got any waters flowing through. But all of them do end up at the bottom here, which is called our river sink. Past this rock, they all drop down a 60-foot drop, and then come out nearby to the Pavilion Gardens Boating Lake before beginning their journey all the way through the town of Buxton, through the Pavilion Gardens, and past the Wybridge House a bit further up. Now, the word why is officially just the Anglo-Saxon word for river, which tells us that some obviously very creative individual has just decided to call our river the Derbyshire River River. <laughs> uh, down here in our river bed, We've got what was the most popular stop on Victorian tours. This is the Victorian petrification well. It might be a little bit difficult to see if you're up there, but you're welcome to come down or head a bit further up to see past this, just underneath this ledge of rock here. This is where the Victorians would have petrified objects or turned them into stone by placing them down into the well for them to calcify. We do actually have one of these petrified objects in our exhibition. You've got a chance to look around in there. We've got a stone bird's nest and a display case right next to the door. And we did discover that this down in our well, along with various other objects, usually things like hats and scarves and gloves, and the sort of things that Victorian tourists would have had on them. This would have been an option on Victorian tours to have any one of your own objects petrified and preserved for hundreds of years. This process, they would claim, would take about one year. They'd be told to come back one year later when the outside of the object should be fully coated in this calcite. But the process of calcification actually takes hundreds of years to fully develop. The Victorians had a very clever way of speeding up this process in which they placed burnt limestone ash on this shelf just above the well. This would create a very concentrated, readily available source of this calcite, which would then drip down into the well over time and speed up the process from hundreds of years.
resource in the area and practically worthless if you were the rocks here. It's been forming for about 100,000 years, just like our flitch of bacon. And actually, stalactites and stalagmites will quite often will meet, eventually forming what is known as a stalagmite or a column. Now we have an example of one of the stalactite and the stalagmite have met, and neither is going to be able to grow up or down anymore. It will continue to form, but it will actually start to grow outwards. We can sort of already see that starting to happen around the base here. In about 100,000 years' time, this column will have formed outwards enough to fill in this entire side shelf along here. Now just before we head through to our next area, I'd just like to warn the schools in the room glow for us, and it highlights just how many formations we have. Now as we walk past, there is one stalagmite growing up from the hand railing here, of course, I do usually say not to touch the formations, but if anybody is particularly curious, there is one on the handrail that is completely fair game. I will warn you though, it does just feel like a cold, wet rock. If you'd like to come on through. <laughs> yeah, don't touch. You can come on round, you don't all need to wait at the back, all the way through the chamber. You hit it. Sorry. As I mentioned earlier on in the talk, Mr. John Paul, who the caves are named after, was known as a man eating giant in certain legends. Now I regret to inform all of you, but he is actually with us in this chamber. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Just here on the wall we've got the, uh, the scary jump pool. We've got the eye and the mouth and the saw shape around. I'm sure you're not a man of the giant. <laughs> and just above him we've got the dragon hat formation. Now this is actually named by a five year old who I tour a few weeks ago. He said right at the top he was a dragon. We've got the eye. Yeah, yeah, come on through, we don't know. But actually, as it did, it used to be known as the graveyard for me. 
formation, we've sort of had to give it the artificial name, the zombie formation, because we've had to come back to life. Now as we head down, I'm about to switch out the lights in this chamber, so if you take any pictures you'd like, if you'd like to follow me down this way, do be sure to watch your step in the sound of mine.
ancient rock fault, which would have tumbled down from our boulder choke right up here. All the rocks ended up at the bottom and then have them like piled on top of each other and then been dripped on by calcite over thousands of years from this piece of flowstone just above. This is known as our Grand Cascade. And actually, even held under direct light right up here, we can see it's sort of glittering, similar to what we're getting down here. This is just what calcite crystals look like when they're completely dry like this and held under this direct light. And it's likely what led the Victorians to believe the flitch of bacon would be worth something a bit earlier on. Now, while we can't sell this calcite for any large amount of money, it does create some very interesting formations through our caves, including probably my favorite one right here, the Sculpture Formation, which is actually named, uh, not particularly creatively, but this is for a very good reason. Everyone who looks at this formation seems to see something different in the rocks and gives it a different name. So it's been left fully open to interpretation. I usually throw it to the group if anybody has any sort of suggestion of what we call our formation right here. Any ideas? Feel free to call out. Mushroom. Broccoli. I like that. <laughs> Mushroom. 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 Yeah, definitely on top here, yeah. Cauliflower cheese. I got suggested a uh, dragon egg the other day and um, half popped popcorn kernel. Popcorn. I also got swan. Somebody said uh, this looked like a beak and this is its eye right here, sort of tucking its beak into its wing. I think possibly my favourite suggestion so far might actually be the roast dinner. <laughs> right on top we've got the chicken or the turkey and then the cauliflower or the broccoli on the side. Two roast potatoes and then the gravy flowing right down the middle. <laughs> now just before I continue, can I check with everybody? Nobody here is afraid of the dark. Are we okay if the lights go off for a minute? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Alright, as we are so far down in the caves, we're currently a thousand foot from the entrance and a hundred feet deep under these rocks above us. Thompson. When these lights go off, there will be no external light source, and we will be plunged into the closest thing to true darkness. You won't be able to see anything at all, aside from perhaps a faint glowing from the machinery around. It will just be 60 seconds, and of course, if anybody wants me to switch them back on, just call out and I will do so. Oh, oh it's God. completely dark. Now you could wave your hand around in front of your face, and you might think you're able to see it before you look really closely and realize you can't see anything at all. In fact, this would be the perfect level of light for a man-eating giant to come wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> now, this far down in the caves during the Victorian wars, they didn't actually have any gas lamps installed. It would have been just one tall guy with one candle between about 20 or 30 people. It's at this point, this far down in the caves, that the guy would pretend that something had dripped down onto his candle and then blow it out. <laughs> they would then demand everybody's money if they wanted them to relight the flame, or they'd be forced to face the journey alone in this level of darkness. Now, unfortunately, the management says we're not allowed to do that anymore. It's completely dark. So the lights should just come back on. That brings us to the end of our talk. Thank you. Thank you.